Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. It's last Sunday of September. It's good to see all of you here, and welcome to those who are worshiping with us now online and those who will be watch watching this video later to worship during the week. Announcements are as you find them in your, in your sheet there. Notice um, this week after worship, Katie will be introducing herself immediately following the last hymn, so just stay where you're at, and we've got at least a, a good half hour here, a little bit more before First Presbyterian um, needs to use our space. And also next weekend, the Boy Scouts um, troop that Amy is one of the leaders for, and they use our building every Monday night. They've been doing it for years, and well, actually, this particular troop this troop was the last year or so, but we have hosted um, scout meetings here for quite a few years. They would like to give us a thank you for continued for use and continued use, and will be providing us with donuts after worship next weekend downstairs. We're going to make sure the tables are set up as COVID safe as possible. So please um, stay for that too next week. That will also be an opportunity for Katie to chat with you and and you with her and get to know her a little better. Newsletter will be coming out this week, so please open it and read it, and there are some more youth events coming up, um, as well as some other information in there. One of them is uh, family worship is next Sunday. That worship service will be especially geared toward children. I'm going off the lectionary, and we'll be using material and, and readings from the Sunday school curriculum. And if kids get squirmy, restless in worship, they can um, go to the side room area there where, where we've got some activities set up. And if, you know, if any of y'all want to color, go right ahead. It's just the chairs are kind of short. Also, um, in the lounge today, there are some free things. 
um, including some candles that I guess were part of a fundraiser years and years ago, and we found them in a storeroom that we were cleaning. We, yeah, that um, Jerovics were cleaning out. As, as well as, it, I know one of you has got to want this. It is a really cool antique adding machine that would look great in somebody's living room or something, right? So don't fight over it, but it's there for the taking also. Any other announcements that we need to hear this morning? Oh, then let us take a breath. Pray that the PowerPoint stays up today and let us begin worship. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Steadfast and saving God, have mercy on us. We have strayed from your ways. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of God, receive mercy and grace in your time of need. God forgives your sin. God's healing love is balm for your wounds. Continue to pray for one another. Care for those who are wandering and seek the good that you may live. Amen. The grace and peace of God, the hope of Jesus Christ, and the consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God who draws near, who comes to our level, whose nature is revealed in lordship laid aside, Give us grace to welcome you in the one who tests the bounds of our community, in the child, the outcast, the one who comes with no power, save that of remaking our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, the one who will be betrayed. Amen. You may be seated. A reading today from James, the fifth chapter. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among you wanders from the truth, and is brought back by another. You should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Amy, do you want to do this? Thank you. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. 
for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of cold water to drink, because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. For it is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Abby and Aaron, you want to come forward for a I won't say children's because you're young people, so we've got a lot of things here today. Hang on. It's kind of like Mary Poppins' bag under the altar, under the pulpit today. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. How many of you are doing awesome today? <laughs> Great. Thank you. So it's a kind of a strange gospel reading, and Jesus talks about cutting off parts of us. He doesn't mean it literally. It's like you got to be careful because if, if we get in the way of people believing in God, it hurts us too because, because we break relationships. But first of all, I'm going to... So Aaron, you go over that way, and Abby, you go over this way. Um, I probably should have started this tape before this, but okay. Don't you just love it when you start to peel tape and it goes twice? <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to make a line down right between you two. And I'm going to say, let's see. Hmm. Anybody? So I'm actually I'm gonna sit on this side with Aaron. Sorry, because you know what? I like kids with camel shoes better than kids without camel shoes and camel masks. How does that make you feel? Yeah, kind of sad. Kind of that's not right, is it? No. So. That's what John was doing in this gospel reading. He saw somebody, the disciples saw somebody healing, and they said, gosh, that person's not with us. That person's not with Jesus. He shouldn't be doing that sort of thing because only those people with Jesus should do that sort of thing. It's like he made a line between that person and Jesus. Was that right? Does Jesus stay on one side and keep other people on another side? Nope. Because it makes, if we tell people that though, if we tell some people in some way that they're not good enough or we don't like the way they dress, it makes a line between us. And then you can't have good kindness and relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah, so in wherever Jesus is, which is all the places, there aren't any lines. Everybody is included. And we do things in our lives that, that put lines between us when we're not kind. Sometimes, when, if, do you guys ever argue? Do they ever argue? Sometimes. <laughs> we do. We just do because we're human beings, and I know you do, and just because I'm telling you, that, 
this message of love doesn't mean you're not ever going to argue, but I hope maybe it makes you think a little bit when you do get anger at one another, when we get frustrated with one another, not to make those lines that divide us. So like if I said, well, I'm only going to give um, Abby stickers, but not you, that wouldn't be good, would it? Would you like some stickers, some space stickers? Um, and I'm going to very carefully, because, so there's some for you. When we trust that God loves us, it's like it makes our heart so happy. And when we share that love, we realize it makes other people's hearts happy. And it's like we're like shooting out in space. We're so happy. Okay, so maybe that's stretching it, but, you know, no lines between us. And I also have backpack tags for you to put on your backpacks for school, and your mom can help you figure out how to fasten those on there. And to remember that God loves everyone. God's love is big enough for everyone, and once in a while there are people that we can't have a relationship or we need to stay away from because they're not good people, they're not safe people, but it doesn't mean we can't pray for them. We don't have to draw that line completely. That we can always pray for people that we don't like. Sound right? Sound, I mean, sounds good? All right. Thank you for coming up. And we'll... You can go back. Thanks. And I kind of just like to in the sermon there, but I've got more stuff under here. Grace and peace from God, the source of all life and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now this is a hard gospel text. You know, it's not a gospel text for beginners, and if anybody ever asks you to help them learn who Jesus is and how to be a disciple, don't start with this gospel text. It's also not on any preacher's list of favorite texts to preach. But it is a good example of why biblical literalism has its limits, that we don't take every word in scripture at face value. In fact, Episcopal priest and writer Barbara Brown Taylor nails it when she says, walk into the most Bible-believing church you can find. Go to a place as strict as that, and I bet you won't find many people with eye patches and wrapped stumps. Sorry. What we can take literally, though, is that this text points us to the God who literally gives us life, to gives everybody life, and loves those whom God has made in God's own image, which is everybody on the planet. And in response, in the freedom of the cross, this text reminds us that God blesses all of God's children to do the same for one another. There's no insiders and outsiders when it comes to God's kingdom. Everyone, all are heirs of God's grace. There's no winners and losers, only the ones for whom Jesus died, which is all of everybody. And there's no drawing lines in the sand so to speak, that create limitations and stumbling blocks that say less than, not good enough. It's only the cross, God's suffering, redeeming love that makes a way through death, death to life even now. In these verses today, and actually in the last several weeks and in the weeks to come, this portion in Mark is right before Jesus gets to Jerusalem, verses, or chapters 8 to 10. And Jesus ramps up the hard reality of servant discipleship. This week especially, he says, there are no lines. He doesn't say this, but he means there are no lines in the sand. If the disciples do or say anything that creates limits or barriers for others to experience the presence, the salvation, and the love of God, the wholeness of life that God intends for all, well, Jesus says, it would be better if they cripple themselves than do such a thing. Better, 
writes Taylor, that they should limp and grope their way into the kingdom of God, then be thrown whole and healthy into hell. We would be hard pressed to find more brutal words from Jesus on the consequences of sin. We might wonder what set Jesus off, why these harsh words here in this portion of the gospel. And again, he knows he's running out of time. Jerusalem is only a short distance ahead. Maybe it was the disciples' continued lack of understanding, too, of Jesus and his mission. And this latest episode was the tipping point, where he says, okay, you got to just fish or cut bait, people. John tattles, right? He tattles. You ever um, have kids, or maybe you yourself when you were kids, say, Mom, so-and-so is doing that. Yeah, I mean, we do it now, too, as adults, don't we? John tattles on someone who used Jesus' name to cast out demons. And heaven forbid, literally, according to John, that anyone outside of Jesus' closest followers, the insiders, do such a thing. Like heal, make whole, and love in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we tried to stop him because he was not following us. The disciples drew that line. We're the ones Jesus has chosen. We're the ones on God's side. Like, whatever happened to following Jesus? Would someone complain about us doing God's work? Okay, this is your warning, Carla. We draw those lines in the sand. This is... I should have started this before my sermon. Help. Wait, I think I got it. Okay, like about mid... And under the pulpit is a pair of scissors that I got just, there we go. We draw those lines, and they stick, right? It's not just kind of, oh, maybe I don't like you, maybe. But we draw lines between ourselves and others, too. And even think back to before the Reformation, when the Catholic Church drew a line between people and God, you need to pay indulgences in order to get into heaven. You need to be... Confess every single one of your sins before you get to take communion. And whew, Martin Luther had a problem with that. We would have a problem with that. But lines are drawn all the time. We either do it intentionally or unintentionally. And these get in the way between us and others, get in the way of our relationship with God and other people. And we make barriers for other people in their relationship with God and the abundant life God intends for them. And that harms only not them, but also we ourselves. It's like we cut off our arm or our foot when we don't see others as God sees them. It's like we have already plucked out an eye. And the big picture, we're part of a nation that's created chasms between human beings that threaten the health and well-being of everyone especially the most vulnerable groups of people. And so are we at a tipping point in this nation? It seems too often like we are. Like, can we ever move forward out of all of this division and divisiveness and anger and infighting in politics? It's like the very fabric of our humanity is being unraveled, and there's too few people concerned about that. The toxic partisanship in our government has a ripple effect into the everyday lives of every citizen, every child of God, into our churches, 
anger and arguing, the holding back of life-giving policies and actions, because to agree with the other side, even if they have a better idea, it would be treason because we don't want to cross the line that we've created. And then think of all the little lines that we might draw that cause other to people to think, if that's what other Christians act like, I want nothing to do with the church or the God that they believe in. Now we say, and I say this in all kindness and love, and we say on our sign, we welcome everybody here. There's a place. But have we drawn a line on ourselves on how far we feel comfortable in going up and talking to people we don't know? Do we talk about how we are all God's children, and this is like all of us all together, and then ignore some of those children or make judgments, exclude them? Do we talk about God's good gifts to us and then hoard those gifts like misers, refuse to share our time, our wealth, our gifts that God has given us to share for the sake of our own well-being and that of others? Do we talk about God's amazing grace and then hold on to hurts and grudges, save them up like a catalog of griefs that collect bitterness like dust? Do we talk about how much we love Jesus and then at, act recklessly in the midst of a pandemic with no regard for our neighbors? Sometimes we think, what can we do when the problems are so big, when, they, when we ourselves, it seems, can't do a thing? When little lines become a big one, us against them, winners and losers in the game of life, death against life. One thing, as James writes, is it can drive us deeper into prayer, and I hope it does. Because prayer matters, prayer works, and I think almost everyone, if not every one of us here, has an example in our life. It says prayer matters. Prayer has power because God promises it. Sometimes it seems like prayer is not enough because I don't know about you, but I've been praying for years about peace and wholeness. So I'm sure we all have. What then? Do we give up? No, I hope not. But we do keep saying, what now, Jesus, for us? Only these words of judgment about our sin? No. There's promise here, too. Did you notice the one person in this reading that only gets one verse? The anonymous someone who knew the name of Jesus and trusted the power it held to heal. And he believed that he had the authority to speak Jesus' name in this way. And maybe in doing so, he was made more whole himself. He didn't think about sides, if he was a Jesus insider or not. He saw someone suffering and took a chance and called on God to help. There is not only judgment in these texts, there's also promise. Jesus impresses on the disciples and on us that everything we do has consequences. The way we live our lives, our words matter. They have the power to cause others to stumble in their faith. And if that's true, the opposite is also true. That our words, that we ourselves have the power to be a path for others to come to Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, we do have power to make change for the better. If the disciples had not been so quick to judge someone, maybe they would have seen and they would have realized that God had blessed them, the disciples, to be a blessing. Maybe they would have really seen with the eyes of their heart what it really means to believe in Jesus and love like Jesus if they hadn't been so worried about that line they had drawn. Maybe they wouldn't have been too afraid to follow Jesus all the way to the cross. What now, Jesus, for us? In these days when the drawing of lines has become deadly, if we take to heart God's meaning in the fifth commandment, you shall not murder, and we murder with our words and our thoughts and our actions. We've 
certainly as a whole nation become quite adept at that. And yet here today, we hear that God does equip and empower us through our baptism, in this meal by the power of God's word and in the name and the love of Jesus, in the wisdom and the love of this community of faith, to be signs of God's grace and love, to be menders of divisions, and healers of bodies and souls, truth tellers, to speak out against anything that diminishes life, the soul of God's little ones. And as I've said all along, it's a process, but the process doesn't move forward unless we do. God names us beloved and calls us honored and precious. If you remember that line I have us repeat every once in a while, so repeat, if you remember, you could probably just say it, but like me, I had to think about it, so repeat after me. I am God's beloved child. I am God's beloved child, worthy of love, worthy of love, it's not quite right, but that's okay, and God will use me to change the world, change the world. It's true, it is true that you all have the power to make a difference in little ways, in big ways, but the process has to move forward to get us, the spirit gets us out of being comfortable, out of being comfortable being introverts, which doesn't mean we have to change our whole personality, but it might mean taking a risk and saying, I don't believe I know your name. Who are you? This is who I am. Maybe it means greeting Abby and Aaron too, especially after worship, and say, hi, it's great to have you here because it is. I'm Krista. Good to have you. And then you'll know some of us too. And it always makes us feel more comfortable and others feel more comfortable when we know one another. As Taylor describes, God has given us two good eyes to see our neighbors, to see the world the way God sees it, to use our two good feet to carry us into it as deeply as we dare, where we can stretch out our still attached arms to someone in danger of stumbling so God can study us and save us all. In God's reality, there are no sides. Only life in the kingdom of God, where all can thrive. What does Jesus have for us now in our drawing of lines? But the cross, and that's enough for all of us. Amen. Change my heart, oh God. Make it, make it.
please stand as you're able. Let us profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As children of God and heirs of God's promises, whether we meet in assembly or worship from our homes, we join together in prayer for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the whole church and its ministry. Bless the newly baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Bless Amy Heimerl and all the newly ordained. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and servant hearts. Strengthen them with a desire to protect the vulnerable and foster equity. Repair divisions between political parties and in communities. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you have accompanied your people through times of captivity, wilderness, and exile. Shelter and sustain now all those who flee persecution, oppression, warfare, violence, hunger, and poverty. Open our hearts and homes, our gates and doors, so that they may find safety, peace, and welcome, a place to live in freedom and without fear. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those struggling with COVID-19, ensure equitable vaccine access during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We pray also for those who struggle with addiction, for the grieving, and those with chronic pain. For all who are ill, provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain medical personnel and all caregivers with energy, endurance, and patience. We pray especially for Bruce and Deb, Bob, Lois, Amy, Phil and Jackie, Steve and Lana, Tammy, Barb, Katie, John, Andy, Elvera, Lori, Chad, Dan, Chase, Gabriella, Marilyn, and Jeff, and those who name aloud or in our hearts. God of mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all leaders of this congregation, staff, council, and committee members, musicians, and other worship leaders, and for all who volunteer their time in any way. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, for the sake of our beautiful Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share signs of peace from a distance with one another. Or the, you know, liturgical elbow bump. Let us pray, God of abundance. You, you cause streams to break forth in the, in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering Christ's love for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit, O God, in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. We pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come, for the table is ready and all are welcome. You may be seated. For those worshiping with us online, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of new life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of celebration. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive the benediction. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Just a reminder that immediately following the song, I'm not even going to dismiss you. Those of you, and I hope it's all of you who can stay, Katie, stay for um, Katie's introduction and a time to ask questions. All right, Marlene, let her rip. I've been humming it ever since we had it last night. Please be seated. And Katie, if you'd like to come up and use the pulpit mic. Um, Amy, do you want to get the handheld? And I'll, or if you want to run around if people have questions at some point. And, yeah. So. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> okay. Hello, so I'm Katie, and I'm so excited to be here, and I cannot wait to meet all of you. Um, I've already gotten to meet Abby at confirmation, so that's wonderful. Um, I came from Richmond, Virginia. That is where I grew up. I have been an ELCA Lutheran my entire life. I also went to Roanoke College which is an ELCA Lutheran college where I studied Christian studies and parish youth leadership. Um, so I graduated from college in December and following that I was a coordinator for children, youth and family ministries at College Lutheran Church in Salem, Virginia. And a little over a week ago, I moved to Wisconsin. So very happy to be here. Um, Eric and I have started hiking the Ice Age Trail. We've done 35 miles so far. We've got a lot more miles to go as the whole thing's 1,000 miles. Um, so that is something that I like to do for fun. And I am very excited to 
be able to have different activities for the youth and hopefully we'll be able to go to the ELCA youth gathering with them. Um, that's something that I got to do as a youth, so I would love for them to also have that experience. Does anyone have any questions for me or anything like that? Well, we had a couple of things that you've been working on so far since you started this. Yes, so, so far we've planned a couple upcoming things like carving pumpkins and what else did we plan? Um, trunk or treat. I don't know if any of you all have ever participated in a trunk or treat, but we will be having one of those. Um, yes, I've been calling families and I have gotten some responses so that we have a youth group this Wednesday as well as we have something for the younger children where we're going to read a book and kind of talk about that book with them. So, is that the yes, that is story. That is story time with Katie. Um, great book. It's called What Is God Like by Rachel Held Evans. Um, and it talks about how God is more than just, like, he's in everything, and he's all around us, and it helps them to see kind of, like, where is God? Um, so, Thursday. Thursday night, yes, that is on Thursday night, thank you, thank you, at 6.15, yes. Um, so this week, I'll continue calling families. Um, some of the families I've called don't even worship at our church, so that, that's been kind of an experience for me. Um, so I'm hoping that we will have lots of participation in our upcoming events and things like that. Just calling everybody, so, yes. Um, well, do you all have any questions for me? Yes, ma'am. What is your last name, Katie? <laughs> my, my last name is Gattuso. Thank you for your question. Any other questions at all? You may ask anything you wish. You can introduce yourself to me if you, is anyone from Virginia? No, okay. <laughs> Um, your um, goals, kind of your idea of what sh what is a good, vibrant youth and family ministry look like? I know it's going to be a process here, but yes, ma'am. Um, I think that a good, vibrant youth and family ministry is one in which people can build lasting relationships with each other, um, be involved in the community. So, doing hands-on work, not just donating money to places. Um, as well as like diving into the word and worshiping. I think it's very important to see that Abby and her brother are here for worship this morning. Um, so all of those things intertwined, I think, are what would build a vibrant, healthy youth and family ministry. And you're gonna do this all by yourself, right? No, ma'am, that is not true at all. I actually need all of your help um, with volunteering in any way that you feel like you have the gifts that you can share. Um, I would love to get to know you and what you feel like you can contribute because this is not a one person thing, it's all of us all together. Good question, Pastor Pat. Once in a while I come up with them. <laughs> Do you know what a cheese head is? Do you... No, I mean, I've, I've heard it a few times. Um, I'm assuming it just. I think yes, so that we can have some rivalry in the home. Yes. <laughs> but it's not a necessity. <laughs> not a necessity. So what have you found most enjoyable about Wisconsin since you've moved here? I'm so sorry. Who is asking me that question? It would be me. Oh. <laughs> so for us, it was God, actually. Yes. But. <laughs> what I have found most enjoyable is driving through and seeing more corn than I have ever seen in my life. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Like, I really do. All the farmland and, yes. So, I very much enjoyed that. And I, come, I came from the mountains, so I miss seeing the mountains, but there's still so much beautiful land. Yes. <laughs> okay, any other questions that you may have for me? Anything at all? Yes, ma'am. No. <laughs> the answer is no. This morning I was like shivering. It was very cold. Yes, yes. Um, 
<laughs> yes, ma'am. So the service next week has a lot of, um, like the message and the songs are going to be geared for families and children, as well as there's going to be, I'm going to be over there with the children so that they can um, have somebody over there while they're worshiping. So Coordinated really, act, coloring activities there. Yes, it's really just going to be more, the message and the activities are going to be more geared towards children, which we're all children of God, so I think that um, hearing the message in that way will be good for all of us. I'm also going to rewrite some of the liturgy, too, and when it comes to the prayers of intercession, we'll ask any children present families if they have if they can think of some things maybe going with the, the lesson we do, we're going to be talking about creation, some prayers they could think of that we should add to our prayers. Um, and if any of them present are good on-the-spot readers, to have some of them read the prayer petitions. And hopefully this week I will find a, um, one or two readers to read the scripture lesson. So we're just jumping off the lectionary and our usual stuff next Sunday. Um, and having youth, kids, families involved, if any parents want to read, I mean, I don't have all the things to read, but we'll involve them as much as possible in the leadership of the service also. And that Katie and I are going to work on that this week. <laughs> has your first week been a whirlwind? It has been wonderful. We've gotten to meet lots of different people, and the church. there's always people at the church, so that's very exciting. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I don't see any hands do, do, do. Okay, I think that's good. All right, well, I'm very excited to get to know all of you. Um, and if you have any grandchildren or children or youth, send them my way. I will try to reach out to them as best that I can. So, And in the newsletter coming up, her email will be in there to get a hold of her by phone, call the church, um, or stop by. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Pat. Thank you. Welcome. I just say, I'm, as pastor here, I'm very excited, too, to have her here. And for me, it's like this big relief that Katie, who's got so many skills, is here, and it's not all on me. Well, it wasn't all on me anyway, but I felt like that. Um, but together, we're going to make this work. And just remember, again, it's a process. And COVID time, not every family with kids is going to feel comfortable being here in worship. So we're just going to keep at it. We're going to keep at it. And um, right, wherever two or three are gathered, there Jesus is in the midst of us. So go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Great. Thanks be to God. Woo! Thank you. Have a good week. Thanks. Oops, that was up.